Fred. Fred has been a long-term supporter of children's rights, fathers' rights, and he started one of the earliest fathers' rights group in uh, the greater Sacramento area and is somebody that's clearly an advocate for the rights of children for 50-50 uh, shared equal parenting. Fred? Thanks, Rob. Thanks for organizing this whole thing. Um, I see signs about weave, and there was mention of weave, and I, I do want to give you my opinion, as well as somebody else who can't be here to speak for herself. Um, she was the founder of weave, and before she died last year, looked back at uh, what weave has done and agreed with me that Weave has done more harm than good. Um, she was really intending Weave to be something that would end domestic violence, and uh, it turned out to be instead an advocate for women, regardless of uh, the domestic violence situation. And even women who perpetrate domestic violence get help from Weave. Um, Weave has willfully and consciously disseminated false information to our judges and training programs. Weave has willfully and consciously disseminated false information to the media under the uh, catchphrase of break the silence. Weave has done everything it could to maintain a silence about domestic violence against men and the truth behind the dynamics of domestic violence. Weave has worked to undermine the funding and licensing of uh, researchers and counselors who recognize the true dynamics of domestic violence. And Weave, although it tells the media, helps men, um, as of February, where I checked it out, they still weren't. Anyway, I formed a nonprofit organization to raise awareness about all men's issues and I've been running that organization ever since. That was in 1977. So over the past 31 years, I've gone from a young gun to uh, an elder statesman. And that's why I was invited today, the elder statesman. Uh, in 1981, I was the keynote speaker at the very first meeting of the National Congress for Fathers and Children. I was constantly giving speeches, writing articles. And generally speaking, from what I knew about the system, but not from what I had experienced firsthand until 1994. In 1994, my own son was born. Since then, uh, from 1994 until today, I've begun my speeches by saying I've been my son's primary caretaker since he was eight months old, but it's not because the system worked. It's because the system didn't work. The system did everything it could to strip my son of a meaningful father in his life. But by, uh, by spending five years of gross annual income. People have referred to the money that's involved in the system. You know, and, and there is no, you, you think there's a contradiction between all the money in the system and, and the people who are saying, who run the system and say, no, the system is in the best interest of children. There's no contradiction. They're telling you the truth. What they're not telling you is that they're talking about their own children, not your children. Because I'll never be able to send my son to college. But I'm sending their children to college, so the system is definitely in the best interest of some children. Anyway, uh, I'll begin my, my speeches by saying that the system didn't work, and today is the most difficult speech I've given, because after 14 years, the system finally worked. It finally succeeded in stripping my son of his father. It finally enabled a sick and vengeful woman to deprive my son of fathering. So this weekend, for the first time in my life, I will be celebrating a fatherless day. Um, and one of the saddest things, when Donald was talking earlier, um, he talked about the saddest thing of the situation. I'm going to try to get through it without tearing up. And Donald knows how difficult it is. But one of the saddest things, when I lost my son, was facing the fact that I failed to protect him, that I knew all along what his mom was doing, and I failed to get the system to protect him. They knew all along, but they just didn't act. 
And uh, we as fathers, you know, that's, that's one of our prime directives, is to protect our children, and we're not able to do that thanks to the system. It's, it's the most difficult thing to accept. But what pointers do I have to give you after 31 years of activism? I'm going to list just a few. One of them. Do not let people paint you as a backlash to the equal rights movement. We are the equal rights movement. Just as women saw a long time ago that through careers men were able to exercise power and earn rewards and achieve fulfillment, and they said we want a piece of that action, we want to be able to do that too, and we'll call it equal employment opportunity. Similarly, men, at least from 1977 when I started, I watched women raise children. And we realized that by raising children, women exercise tremendous power. Tremendous power over their own children and therefore over the future of society. Tremendous power over ex-spouses. That women too, by raising children, earned rewards. Because if you want to measure someone's standard of living, you don't look at what they earn, which is what the women's movement has been harping on. If you want to measure someone's standard of living, you measure what they consume. And women have been consuming at or above the level of men in all major categories, in education, in health care, personal expenditures, and so on, in housing. And just as men get fulfillment by, through careers, women have been getting a tremendous sense of fulfillment through careers. Um, I know, despite all the incredible things I've done, traveling around the world and having all kinds of fantastic careers, raising my son for those 14 years that I had him was the most fulfilling thing I've ever done in my life. So just as women wanted equal access to men's careers and called equal employment opportunity, men have wanted equal access to parenting. And we call it joint custody. It's the equal rights movement. It is the equal rights movement. There are differences, of course, and I'll list just a few. One of them is, is what we call it. We don't call it, you know, they, they call it equal employment opportunity. We don't call it equal parenting opportunity. We call it joint custody, so there's a different name. Another difference is that the research was mixed on whether it's really in the best interest of children for them to go out and have careers, um, whether it's in the best interest of children to be latchkey children, and so on. Research was mixed on that. Um, but the research is overwhelming that what we're asking for is in the best interests of children. We're asking for children to be raised by a mother and father, and that research is overwhelming. Another difference is that the government took affirmative action to facilitate the movement of men into men's careers, but that same government is taking affirmative opposition to men who are trying to enter parenting. Another difference is that organizations fighting for equal rights at least the, the men's organizations fully support equal employment opportunities for women. Even if the research is miss, mixed. We fully support it because we recognize overwhelmingly that it's in the best interest of society, it's in the best interest of men. Women have full equal employment opportunity. But that's a major difference because women's organizations, women's rights organizations, have been lobbying vehemently against joint, joint custody legislation. They're clinging to their monopoly of power over children. As um, an article in Ms. Magazine said, our power over children is um, our major bargaining chip in getting a good financial settlement. That's why Ms. Magazine opposes joint custody for, for children, for men and women. Um, so that's one pointer. We are part of the equal rights movement. Do not let people paint you as a backlash. Second pointer is we need a big pimp. Anyone who wants strong joint custody legislation and equal rights for fathers is your friend. Some might want to work within the system. Some might want to work without, outside the system. In fact, tomorrow there's going to be another thing, another event here at the Capitol, um, sponsored by Jay Banta, which is a local organization specifically for fathers. And they're having a Father's Day rally right here at the Capitol from 11 to 1 tomorrow. That's an organization that works within the system. There are different strategies. Some people are fathers. Some people are, are sympathetic women, second wives and, and uh, step parents, grandmothers, girlfriends, just plain women with integrity. Some might want to lobby and use the legislature. Some might want to sue in courts and, and use the judiciary. Some might want to demonstrate. Some might want to educate. Some might want to write hard-hitting books and articles. Some might want to write poetry. <laughs> 